Hi, old beaver! Away! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Critscast. It is the season 36 grand final of UGC Platinum Highlander. Some familiar faces, some new faces, but we are going to have a winner at the end of the evening. It is Super Dickman's Kanonen SCCK, the defending champions of both etf 2 and UGC in this grand final, and they are up against Equestria Girls, a team currently uh, surging through Division 1 in etf 2 and have reached the final here tonight. Uh, we get, are now kicking off into the first round of product. It's going to be a best of three grand finals. Nubby coming in pretty hot, trying to trade out with Namba, but nothing too imminent happening just yet. Nubby goes down to Buko, that's a really important pick for them. Alabama so far over this concrete side as well. A really domineering first mid from Equestria Girls, but they've paid the price with a lot of health down on their side. DQZ does get picked off, so no medics from either side. Equestria Girls seemingly being able to close this one out with only Clark in position to contest. That was a really, really interesting look like from Equestria Girls. Alabama just walking across the point on concrete and just absolutely flooding the flank. And that able to, was able to just get them across and win that fight. But because they took so much space early on, they managed to get a lot of kill, but they were so weak. And that's why SCZK now re-pushing, reclaiming the point. They're able to kind of clean up here, but they're getting kills. Namba gets red licks. Ajax gets t boredom. Like Equestria Girls aren't scared here. They're not showing any respect they're going for it. They're getting frags. And so far, they're, they're in control of the early stages of this game. Yeah, it just appears that Equestria Girls are managing to eliminate these sort of uh, uh, really critical classes for retaking that space. You know, Red Lakes was down straight away. T-Board and goes down, unable to reflect any projectiles that Equestria Girls wanted to spam across that point. And uh, yeah, it sort of fell flat on their face from there from SDCK. And Mezzo couldn't even get away with anything. And when Mezzo can't get away with something, uh, it's not a good sign for STCK, but um, Equestria Girls now take the point down uh, pretty reasonably. They've got a, a very minor advantage, but uh, looking to just hold on as the Ubers, Ubers equalize out. Yeah, this is kind of like the first stalemate we've seen so far in the game, but look, aggressiveness from Equestria Girls. They want to take this Uber forward. They don't want to sit down and wait. They force the trade. Nubby's going to take the majority of that Uber, but Buko is currently on a full kill streak, has taken down Red Licks, and at the moment, this is going better for uh, SCCK, but not without its cost. They're losing players. They will get the cap with just Clark in the respawn queue, but... Equestria girls, they really want to take the initiative. They've got the bit between their teeth here, and they want to go forward, and they want to dictate the pace of this game. They're not going to sit back and let uh, SDCK put in them here. Well, that's something that SDCK just do so comfortably against most teams, so it looks like they've definitely done their research to um, just try and make it as challenging as possible for SDCK, but Equestria girls now need a little bit more of an in. It's going to be an equal looper situation again, so any picks at this point is really going to help them out. DQZ in the pocket area, Buko trying to get a little something something from Concrete, trying to force him out of that corner. He gets Aleski, which is a good chunk of the medic's protection down uh, for the side SDCK. It opens up a little bit of space, but Nubby gets old school instantly with that sticky. So they're just trying to force it out. The Uber now coming out of SDCK. Nubby goes super far forward, um, but of course the counter comes out of Equestria Girls. They are three players down, so they can't afford to ever extend, lose too many players. Of course, no cap time as well. Jackie Legs does get backstabbed, which opens up a little bit of opportunity uh, for Assassin Plus to slip out, but um, not really where you want to be after a push like that. No, it's kind of like you're hoping in that exchange you at least have some things going for you, maybe some players, maybe some cap time. At least you want your medical ad. Nobody's basically spawn camping right now. It does does actually go down to Buko in the end. <laughs> it costs him his life. But yeah, you know, when you when you go in that situation, the worst thing you want is to not have the cap point, not have a player advantage, and not have your medic. And now SCK, they're in pole position here to see out this round. Yeah, it certainly looks to be the case. Super aggro as well. Timmy does manage to backstab Red Lake, so uh, that's a decent bit of firepower down with Nubby only just spawning as well. So Equestria Girls take this opportunity, get themselves over this point, hopefully, uh, with their player advantage. And done an awful lot of damage to SCCK as well. They've got yet another Uber out. It's going to be led on May and Nubby, but they've done a really stellar job of dispersing here. Nubby gets picked off by a headshot. DQZ. Oh, a nice rocket from Mong. Picks him off as well. That's a really good opportunity for Equestria Girls to get on this cap and start building up that time advantage. I was going to say, like, Nubby takes that Uber from DQZ, goes forward, hits a sticky onto Assassin, who does a nice, like, cheeky little surf just around the house, avoiding the pipe from Nubby, so Nubby doesn't get a little air shot of his own to get the medic down. And Mong is coming in with that kill. 
means now 100% Uber in the bank for Equestria Girls. They are a few players down, but this is their chance to you know, maybe take the initiative here. They've used the Uber, but no, Namba gets launched into the skybox. He's 9 HP, has to back away. They get a couple of kills, but they're not major kills. They're not the kills that they're looking for right now. Yeah, they're, they're sort of playing a bit of a loss leader. They've got a lot of players down, but the damage onto Equestria Girls is pretty damning. It's just Alabama sort of caught up front. Ajax going down to Red Licks as well. So looks like the pick class is just running a little bit of a muck, and uh, the sort of big fat man on point, Aleski, is doing a pretty stellar job as well as suppressing these Equestria Girls players. Yeah, that's the thing. SSK also just going for a forward hold now. There's 20 seconds left on the clock. They have an Uber. They know that all they really need to do here is use the Uber put the pressure on and Equestria Girls have to get bodies on the point to keep the round alive otherwise it will be going you see Anzu on the on the cap now just trying to tease it a little bit but just gets pushed away Nubby with the quick one two takes down players May's going to be on the cleanup crew as well Timmy trying to get some cap time it's not going to be enough it will be one nil to Super Digmans for this first round uh, on their map choice here Mir but Equestria Girls showing they're not here to just make up the numbers they are actually fighting hard on on their opponent's map choice uh, yeah, we were talking a bit before the game, but I'm certainly taken aback slightly by that uh, by that timeline. So, um, you know, is it a case of, oh, wow, <laughs> I tried to comment, but uh, Nubby goes straight in and trades with Namba, which is, uh, I guess, fair enough. And Jackie Legs also trading with Mong. So, um, many players down on the Equestria girls' side. A pretty decent chunk of health as well for SDCK. So, they're just going to hope that's going to be enough to get them across this point. SDCK uh, picking up players one by one by one on Equestria girls' side. That's all... A, a very fragmented early push there. Yeah, a bit of an odd one. I'm not sure what Nubby was thinking. Just maybe, you know, I'm going to go in and see what I can do. Uh, and the trade's happening. And when there's less players, that's when the individuals start to shine. And SCCK showing that they, they do have those individuals who can step up to the 1v1s. Getting some kills now. And they're trying to go for a bit of a forward hold. It's a bit of a weird one. You've got Jackie Lake Zaleski on this far side with May kind of running around too. Um, and the Uber has been used. Now he's jumping forward, oh, trying to make god. something of it. It feels. Oh my god! He actually <laughs> hits the air by one number as well. This is getting a bit chaotic as well. And I think Equestria girls are just a bit like, what are these guys doing? Yeah, I was gonna say that SDC can't get any bit comfortable, but I don't know. I think they're just uh, they're playing it like a bit of a lobby. Um, it appears at the minute. But the Uber now coming out of Equestria girls. Using it on the pyro, they're getting a little bit of ground, but only managing to kill Aleski with it. So uh, just hoping they can get that cap over the line, potentially at the detriment to their spawners, which it is. Buko manages to pick off Red Legs as well. Um, with the pick classes being down from STCK, it could have been a little bit of opportunity for Equestria Girls to start spamming over this point. The thing is, with Redlix down, he's just respawned um, because he's just died, so my point's going to be moot. But um, I was going to say, when you get the capture point and you have your sniper alive, and he has that freedom to just kind of pick people off, Buka was getting a couple of kills there and not making it easy for STCK to just walk forward and take the point. But now they finally do, and they have an uber advantage, DQC, with that 100%. And Redlix is now the one on the uh, the rock with the sight lines. Um, it's a pretty uh, pretty nasty thing to try and run into. Oh, oh wow. Buka. That was a, a pretty nice shot right before the uh, backstab from Mezzo as well. That was perfectly timed. It was tick perfect. But yeah, we know how important the sniper is picking off the all important classes. The demo man in particular is it's very, very frustrating uh, to lose him as you're trying to take the point. But uh, Number being testament to that as he gets a buster knifed as he walks onto the point on painfully low HP. So Equestria Girls have a decent chunk of position. They need to just get this cap over the line, uh, potentially delaying their spawners, which they do. Uh, so it opens up a good opportunity for STCK to recontest near instantly. Yeah, Equestria Girls have to kind of really think what they're going to do here. And you know what? They don't. They just go straight <laughs> they don't, in. They, don't think. <laughs> <laughs> they have a plan and they're just going to execute it. And uh, Ajax not able to really get much value out of that Uber. They didn't have anyone else in support. It was a solo Uber. And really, you're asking a lot of that person in the Uber to get something out there. Nubby just jumping forward is going to get taken down, but Red Licks with the headshot onto Assassin is going to take down the Medic, takes down Alabama as well. He's on a four kill streak, and SCCK just kind of walk in and say, okay, no Ubers in play right now. We're going to DM, and as you can see, they're the winners of that fight. Yeah, that's uh, certainly one of the merits you'd attribute to SDCK, just uh, making it look pretty easy there. So um, they've got a full uber advantage now. They've got a bit of a stronghold going on this point. So uh, 
Equestria girls, they know they've got to make up a big time deficit. The Uber does come out of SDCK Nubby again, going super, super deep, but he's pretty he uh, unhealthy, so uh, he's got to go as deep as he possibly can. Oh, but DQZ gets isolated by Mog and picked off, so that hands Equestria girls a 60% ad for a potential repush when their spawners come in. Yeah, I mean, again, we're in a situation where SDCK have control of the point right now. They don't have their medic. They're going to have him up in a few seconds. But like you said, it's going to be 60, 70% by the time DQC starts healing. And you know what? If Equestria girls execute this correctly, they can get control of the point, maybe get a lot of kills and set themselves up for maybe getting a point on the board here. But, you know, they really do have their backs against the wall. 20 seconds left on the clock for SDCK. They just have to play this smart and they could uh, get another round on the board. Yeah, coming in pretty late there, but Equestria girls get it anyway uh, without using their Uber charge. So... Um, nothing really lost apart from four of their players. Uh, so uh, they're going to really have to struggle against SDCK as the clock ticks down. You can't really afford to give it up if you've got two minutes to tick down. Their heavy gets picked off. It's going to have to be an Uber charge. And it is pops, but flashes quite heavily on Zabuko there. Um, it's just going to be a number uh, to try and salvage, but no cigar today. And he will get cleaned up by May pretty swiftly. Yeah, it's really, really smart play by, by SCCK. They they keep their medic just in a position where they know he's not going to get caught if things do go wrong. They have Red Licks nice and buff, just pe picking people off. He's on a five kill streak and he manages to just split Equestria Girls right open. And then Jackie Leg sees that opening and goes, right, I'm going to go in. He jumps across the point, gets a load of damage down. They're able to clean up the kills. And Equestria Girls, they don't use a proactive Uber. It's reactive and it's led to now Assassin going down to this nubby Uber. SCCK with only a few seconds seconds left on the clock they just need to cap this and uh, they can see off it off for a second round yeah they've got the frags in hand to see this over the line it's just going to be a bit of a frag fest three players left alive for equestria girls none of them really poised uh, to get on this cap and ajax seemingly going to go down nubby uh, on a bit of a roll at the minute managed to pick up four frags in really rapid succession and uh, that's going to be round two but the, uh, the time margin is closing, CJ, but, you know, we're two rounds in now. You, you, you've got to expect some uh, decent change to put some points on the board as Equestria. Absolutely. I mean, you, the thing is, at the end of the day, if you get rolled 3-0 on a cost map and you say, well, each round went to, to overtime, it doesn't really matter. Like, you need to get the rounds on the board. And Equestria girls started off really strong. They had a really good mid-fight on the first round. And so far, like, it, it seems maybe they're being a little bit more hesitant and maybe showing a bit too much respect to SCCK now. I want to see the Equestria girls we saw in the first 30 seconds um, and they're actually getting a few kills in this midfight. Yeah, DQZ interestingly pulls up the crits creek so it looks like SDCK want to opt for a slightly faster um, phase of play but ultimately do lose that mid. They were just also congested uh, on the bread dog side so the crits now coming out well reflected by the engineer uh, sort of nullifying that crit so Nubby, uh, sorry, uh, Old School just walks across into DQZ, Nubby left alone, isolated by three players of Equestria Girls and a, a slightly lackluster repush there It was interesting to say the least yeah, I mean the crit <laughs> comes out when you've got a crit you really need an idea of what you're going to be doing and they didn't really have anyone to use the crit onto I felt and old school just walking across and just saying, you know what, I'm a pirate. There's not much you, know, you can do to me with a, with a, you know, a demo Chris in my face. Uh, I manages to get the kills, but again, SCCK just walked forward and and captured the point just because of the numbers. And Equestria girls seem to, in these situations, not want to contest. You know, I feel like they should be contesting every fight. They should be going forward, getting their plays into aggressive positions like they did earlier on. At the moment, they're they're giving SCCK too much freedom to dictate how the round is being played out. Yeah, absolutely, you have to because they've just handed them yet another sort of full crits advantage now. So Nubby pops it off, Assassin Plus goes down to the first sticky. That's pretty damning, you know, that's 50 seconds wasted in, in that single sticky alone. So uh, Equestria Girls definitely need to step up the aggression. They need to make it uncomfortable for SDCK because they've done this a thousand times. You, you've got to uh, uh, try and rock the boat just a little bit here. But it uh, looks like SDCK now opting for a bit of a forward hold. Absolutely. You said it exactly right. You know, SCK have faced so many teams over the past few years. They know what kind of stuff to expect. You need to do something against them. And we've seen it with teams, you know, in ETF 2 this season where they're, you know, more experienced teams are coming up against new teams who just hit them with different strategies and it's throwing them off board. 
Um, but SCTK, that crits play, that was so good. Nubby hits the first crit sticky, and I think that's the only killer gets with the crits. But it's what everybody else does. Everyone floods forward, like taking advantage of the chaos that is happening because of that crits. And then Jackie Legs, mate, they're all getting kills because everyone is scattering. They want to avoid the Nubby crits when the real danger is everyone else going forward. And this forward hold is buying yet more time. It's over a minute now that uh, they are in, in ahead in the lead. Um, Assassin is going to have an Uber, so it's going to be an Uber versus Crits here, Mir, but uh, they're going to have to do it kind of perfectly. Yeah, you need to be really proactive with this Uber, because you know as soon as the meta gets spotted, that crit it, it is gunning for you, but Assassin plus doesn't actually get to make that decision. Mezzo uh, gets a, a pretty sweet backstab in that main area, and the crits popped anyway. They know it's free. They know if they just convert a few frags, they're going to be in a really solid pause there, so... SCK quite happy to bunker down for this last remaining minute of potentially the first map. T Borden's not been talked about much in this game, but he's just reflecting everything that comes his way. And uh, you know, as a medic, it's always nice to have a pyro that you know is going to keep those projectiles away from you. And that's going to make it even more difficult for a question. Goes 45 seconds left on the clock. They have to go in now. If they wait any longer, that crits is going to be up again from DQZ. They don't want to be waiting there. They want to be taking the fight now when it's on equal footing. Yeah, and only 20% away as well. They're quite happy to play it pretty reservist. Uh, get Nubby nice and healthy as well as T Bordon because he's going to be the one to try and deny this. Uh, they're 100% now looking to use the crits. Nubby gets popped on. Uh, no frags imminent, but making a lot of ground for his team. Certainly blocking that cap, but gets picked off by Alabama. Uh, Ajax, the only casualty of that. So the question girls have a little bit of a shot here. They've got a full Uber advantage in hand and a four player advantage here. So. Uh, Definitely grounds for them to get set up, but SDCK, two, over two minutes ahead, it's not a good spot hmm. to be in. Do you want to do the difference between this team and between Equestria Girls and SDCK, between you know a good team and a Premiership winning team? They captured the point there when Buka was about to spawn. Even though it's not your medic or your demo, you want your sniper up in exactly this situation. You want him in position. And you can see all of the grounds that Equestria Girls have given up. All of the players that are now dying to this crits because they didn't have a sniper watching those sightlines. And a sniper of Buko's quality you want in position, ready to receive all those players freshly coming out of spawn. So that small thing may just cost them this round. Yeah, we spoke about this before, just how critical that, you know, that sniper is for disrupting the pushes. You know, you get a single headshot on that demo man, um, mm. and it's pretty much curtains for the push. So, uh, yeah, perhaps not the reason uh, for the L, but definitely one of the many contributing factors. But a little bit tighter than we thought it was going to be. STCK, obviously, this is their map choice. You know, this is their, um, their bread and butters. And Equestria Girls on Vigil, obviously, a map that's been around the block a few times now. Um, but... I, I think there's still a fair bit to learn on that one, so so it could potentially prove to be quite interesting. Because Vigil is still relatively new in Europe compared to you know things like Product and Upwards, so this may be something for them to build on. They may have some strats that SCK have not seen before, and maybe that's their chance to get back into this final. We could take a look at the logs from the uh, from the first map and, and Nubby hitting nearly 600 wow. DPM there, uh, benefiting from those crits. But yeah, just absolutely slaying, top fragging, top damaging, and, and really putting in a shift there. Um, yeah, getting four times the enemy demo man's frags is uh, obviously, it's quite obvious to tell in the way that the game panned out why that's happened. But seeing it on paper, it, it, it stings even to me. But, uh, you know, both snipers running it pretty even. Obviously, Buko going down a lot more because they knew, SCCK knew that he was going to be uh, the one, if anyone, to, to sort of um, ruin their parade. So, um you know, not too many major disparities across the board other than that. But again, you, you, you can't really pick it apart too much. Very, very reflective of, of sort of the scoreline there. Um, we'll have to see if this is going to be another turning point. Because looks like we're live and I think, I hope Sticky's work now, man. I really hope Sticky's work, CJ. Well, Nubby's been able to roll out. So that's a good sign. It's a good sign. Oh, sorry, Namba's been ready to roll out. Apologies. Um, so yeah, I, I think we take that. Cap in hand, so... Uh, I would like you to, like, specify in the future. Is it a sticky rollout or is it a demo night rollout? Because we need to know. I mean, it should be a demo night rollout. Like, obviously, I'd love it for it to be a demo night rollout. But that's not what we're seeing. So uh, we'll definitely have to, to uh, give a breakdown. But unfortunately, we are seeing stickies from both sides this time around. So um, don't tune out just yet, guys. We, we have got a potential for a third map where demo night obviously may be deployed. But again, <laughs> There's a way, the demo night percentage is low, but it's never zero. It's exactly, never zero. exactly. But yeah, Equestria Girls again, going for this pretty interesting 
set up, you know, failure sort of pioneered this this when Vigil was first added to the map pool. Mm. Um, they've actually moved the sentry gun to an even more, I, I guess, aggressive position, but it looks even more vulnerable in that one, but not necessarily as productive as you would hope. Um, but yeah, here we go. The gate open. SDCK. This is map two. SDCK coming in off a win. Aleski stood still on the cart. Uh, gets headshot by Buko. Nubby uh, tries to bomb over. Looks like he's just trying to spot things out a little bit as the cart progresses. Um, SDCK now identified that all of these players definitely bunkering down on the flank. Now Nubby goes in in isolation. So a, a, a lapse in judgment perhaps. Um, but yeah, they're just quite happy to let the cart progress. Take a little bit of space. They have dragged DQZ out of the spawn. So uh, going to look to try and disassemble this Equestria Girls defense. Jackie Lakes just bombs straight into Alabama. He does die, and honestly, he's there for the follow-up. So they knew, you know, the, the positioning. They are sacrificing a lot of people. Nubby's so high, oh. I can't see it all. <laughs> and he's off the cliff. Not quite, that's not quite. Brilliant. He didn't even get to detonate his stickies. That's, um, <laughs> that's a tragedy. Um, yeah, but the cart progressing. They've actually managed to get it past the sightline um, of the engineer now. So it's putting Equestria Girls out of position. They've had to commit everyone forward. They've popped the banner off. Um, and it's going to sort of force their hand a little bit. You can see how fragmented they are. A huge... Oh, my oh. God, Jackie Legs. That is painful. But, you know, they just split up a quest because They got so fragmented, and then they just got absolutely owned. So if we speak about momentum on this map, this is a huge opportunity for SDCK to, SDCK to garner some momentum now. Full Uber advantage, four-player advantage. Um, no position for Equestria Girls over this hill area. So um, su supposing they don't uh, lax... Um, SDCK should be able to romp this pretty simply, but uh, looks like they want to go for sight. Tonner Red Lakes walks up a uh, hill in isolation and uh, meet his fate. So um, just taking control of this side, Tonner, taking control of hill. They're on this shutter as well, SDCK, and it looks like they're really not keen to use it, but that car progressing really well. And Equestria Girls, they're getting their hands forced, and they're going to have to back out yet again. Yeah, they're really not in a position to defend here. That's why so many teams give up first, just for free mostly, because they want to have you know they're set up ready for the more the, the stronger points later on the second point the third point um they are actually getting quite a lot of kills here clark aleski nubby all down at oh, the moment wow. and the question goes kind of regaining control of second they're at 80 percent so if wow. you know if they uh, if dqz goes in now they are going to jackie Nick's getting some of the uber so is t borden assassin's at 97 98 is just no oh, he dies no. at 99 Mazza with the, the backstab, backstab. That's crazy. That was, um, I was prepared to eat a big old slice of humble pie then, but, um, yeah, 99%. That was painful. Just not quite able to get it in time. The cap over the line now for SDCK. That spawn, forward spawn door now has closed to Equestria Girls. They've got a pyro, they've got a sniper. They're sentry only level one, and the medic are just spawning. It's going to be a, a reasonably equal uber advantage, but SCCK, a lot of space advantage here. Trying to get an early frag onto Assassin Plus. Trying to control the corner of this hill, but Nubby goes painfully, painfully weak down to 3 HP. So um, SCCK playing, playing with an awful lot of ambition here, but they know they want to take this space nice and quick. Yeah, they, they see the space, they take the space, they get that quick and early kill onto uh, Assassin who's just respawned. Timmy did a great job in equalizing things out there by getting the backstab onto DQZ. And because you know of the virtue of the way that the spawns work, the attacking team spawns faster. So DQZ actually, despite dying later, now has a small advantage. And just look at the pressure. And Aleski comes in from behind, takes down Buko. Alabama also gonna go down. There's so many players getting pulled out of position. Uh, the banner is the only thing really keeping our question girls alive at the moment. And the car still has to go up that little hill. So. SCCK being stopped for a moment and things are equal Ubers. I question girls are going to be happy with the way things are turning out right now. They're holding on even though it's just so Ooh. slightly. <laughs> yeah, it's up the slope now. We all know um, how important that is, much like the roller coaster of Upward. They do lose a lot of players, three players SCCK exactly, um, and get the cap over the line with T Borden. So um, a pretty good opener for them. Four minutes is, is a pretty fast time, but. Um, you know, not quite blistering. They definitely want to keep it rolling with a bit more momentum. It's equal looper situation. Their sticky's above. Nubby gets picked off by Buko. That's going to be really critical to their hold here. Aleski has had to overextend himself. Super, super hard looking to pick off the medic as they back out. But there's no heavy weapons uh, to try and counter him there. He does eventually get picked off by Anzu's crit from the reserve shooter. Four players down now on Equestria Girls' side. And SCCK just want to keep tickling 
um, Equestria Girls into submission here um, as they get the cart rolling forward. Tickled into submission, to submission. Yep. Is, is not yep. the way I want to go, honestly, man. Oh, um, I, I, give... I should I save it for after the cast? <laughs> <laughs> I've now got a new nightmare feel. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, this is a map that traditionally we see some very, very fast times. On Mezzo, they're getting the backstab onto Anzu. The sentry's going to be sapped. There's going to be no sentry. There a lot of kills coming down for Equestria Girls, but um, DQZ looks relatively safe and sound is going to back up but yeah we see some fast times on this map equestria girls every kind of fight that they win every exchange that they you know goes their way and they buy it up in more time stck are going to be you know the car's not moving and, and they want to keep that car moving non-stop that's the kind of momentum you expect to see on this map uber is forced though um and dqz doesn't quite have it yet yeah he's so far back though a couple of rollers um Landis Stray Timmy is on him as well. He gets a couple of revolvers off, but Jackie Legs manages to pounce, but actually, no, he does go down. It was because he died to the cleaver of Ajax. Wow, that was um, that was really clutch. There was nobody else that could have um, uh, sort of got in there and gotten that frag onto DQZ. So a huge drop uh, for Equestria Girls. And you know, managing to um, eliminate a, a full Uber charge, it almost buys himself 40 seconds, which is huge on a map that's this fast. Absolutely, because now, you know, Equestria Girls, they, they have a sentry up, well, they had a sentry up, um, they have an Uber advantage, and they have their players alive. Nubby goes down there. Monk's on a six kill streak right now. He is absolutely controlling the upper area with Alabama, just not letting any pressure from that angle whatsoever. Um, eight, seven, wow. eight kill streak. He, is, wow. he finally goes down, but just the pressure, presence up top and the pressure he was delivering there with Alabama, SCC just couldn't get in through those stairs. And, you know, they're holding in a, in a decent position. And like I said, every time that this exchange goes towards the side of Equestria Girls, SCCK's time is going to be worse and worse. And on a map you're expecting a fast time, uh, it all counts. Yeah, we say how fast this map is, but there are certainly some stop gaps, and it looks like Equestria Girls um, are exploiting one of those to the fullest, but Namba gets isolated and picked off Assassin Plus, getting butternived in the face, and eventually picked off by a roller from Nubby. There are three players up by Equestria Girls, so um, this should be free season for STCK to get in. Anzu tries to get in. Alabamo coming around the corner now, but staring down the barrel at six STCK players, um, and a surprising time of seven minutes based off how fast they were off the blocks there, SDCK. Yeah, I'm, you know what? Like, seven minutes is still a fairly fast time. Um, for, you know, for a payload map, it's fast. For a map like this, you, you would, uh, you know, you'd be, a, you kind of like be happy with that. But, you know what? Based on STCK's expectations and how things were going after that, that drop on first, you would have thought they would have wanted to be rolling from second to third, but they got held up on second, they got held up on third, you know, it took a few tries for last. Uh, definitely not smooth sailing for them, and if Equestria Girls are able to come out with some, you know, if they manage to get a drop onto DQZ, manage to get a couple of fast points, they can really start putting the pressure on them. Yeah, they really cannot afford for any major blunders here. They need a, a not not necessarily a fast push, but they need a clean push on each of these points. Um, obviously, rolling momentum like SDCK did against them on the second, as, as sort of ropey as it looked towards the end, um, definitely was um, to their credit. So, um, SDK are, are playing uh, reasonably aggressive here with their sniper. They want to get a really early pick because they're expecting Equestria Girls to be pretty quick out of these gates. Yeah, you kind of got this forward area where you have Jackie and, and May keeping an eye on Red Licks, protecting him so he can get some early snipes. But Clark with that traditional backward sentry, really passive, ready to back out onto second if needs to be. And that forward hold from Red Licks works out well. He managed to get the snipe onto Buko for the first kill of the round. So, you know, it's already value and already chalking off, off time from Equestria Girls being able to get Buko into a good position. Interestingly enough, Red Lakes got the headshot onto Buko and then took the teleporter from the aggro position back to the combo. Um, which is uh, pretty well done, but Buko, uh, as I say, returns, picking off Red Lakes himself. But uh, car progressing forward slowly but surely, STCK now in a really passive position. Um, they're not going to overstay their welcome here as there's a little bit oh, of an attempt for a be. flank. Nubby just goes, he was on the side near the cliff, Sticky jumps in, like high in the air, just lands on the combo, and then just to pipe down Assassin for the drop, just completely just, just takes it out. It's Un absolutely crazy. Unfortunately for SDCK, Mong somehow managed to get in through one of the tunnels and got a force completely independently onto DQD as well, so um, 
is near enough equalized here. The car progressing slowly but surely. Um, a lot of players congested in this tunnel area, so they need to be careful. Make sure they can keep Assassin Plus alive. Um, of course, it does open up a big old gap uh, for Mezzo to exploit, but uh, we know Esquestria girls have been pretty attentive to him so far. They know what a force he can be. They're trying to get their way out of this tunnel now, but take an insane amount of damage there. Um, Nubby, Jackie Legs going down, going to be the Explosive Men uh, for SDCK. They're trying to get the sentry picked off. Mezzo's bicycle gets activated, so um, no frag today, but uh, Equestria just looking to bully SDCK. Just try and take a little bit of ground, try and get this gun down, but um, not quite working out for them just yet. Yeah, Clark is really, really weak and has to back off towards spawn. He's about 30 HP. Uh, Assassin goes down to about 9, has to use the Uber, getting forced there. So DQZ now with the, the huge Uber advantage. But there was a real good chance there for Equestria Girls to actually take an advantage. A lot of players weak, a lot of players, uh, important players were down. Like Nubby was down, Jackie was down. There was an opportunity to get that tunnel and put some pressure on that sentry while Clark wasn't guarding it. He had to back away, otherwise it would have cost him his life. They just didn't take advantage of it and they end up getting forced now. And SSK sitting comfortable in the second point yeah it's um oh a huge bomb coming from mong but completely destroyed um by the wrangler um so dqz gonna try and come in with a, a, a sort of proactive uber they had a very slight advantage but no ground was able to be made up there um they're looking over the apex of this hill now trying to get a pick trying to make red legs a little bit of room um, Timmy, it does get picked off from Equestria Girls, so a little bit of quick pressure down. Nubby is still down on the side, SDCK as well, and Equestria Girls want to exploit it, but met by a huge return in this side tunnel from Ileski and Jackie Legs. TQZ is just away. He was inside the, the dispenser, didn't take a lick of damage, ran away, absolutely fine. And now Nubby on the respawn is there, fully buffed, ready to fight, and they just start getting kills. Um, although, I say that, um... Only three alive. That's, That's not where it's supposed to go. That That's wasn't in the yeah. script. That wasn't in the script. Equestria Girls, 3.50 <laughs> left on the clock here, Mir, and they almost have a free passage all the way to third. Yeah, the stickies have been detonated by Nubby as well, so Equestria Girls definitely in a position to try and take a little bit of ground. The cart was only times one um, for a bit of time there, so Equestria Girls want to take this open flank side. They find Aleski there. Oh. They want to get him in a drop from Mong onto DQZ. That's a huge opener for them. 60% uber advantage on Equestria Girls' side. They've got to be really careful. It's only Buko and Assassin Plus. This is a blunder after, off the back of that really well-executed play. And Jackie Lace manages to pick up the return onto Assassin Plus. They're trying to get the car up this hill. Mezzo manages to pick off one of the players there. They're desperately trying to clamber, trying to get it up. The sticky's there, ready to receive from Nubby. SCK unable to uh, block the final little bit of that hill so Crusher Girls have, have a slightly easier ride but time is definitely ticking three minutes on the clock it's absolutely mad like the, the great team play from Equestria Girls there I was going to say the one thing that was stopping them from taking third for free because Clark was a late respawner wasn't didn't have his sentry up just yet was the fact that you know DQZ had that uber Mon coming with the huge play managing to get the drop um, but then it's the individual players coming out of SCCK. Jackie Legs going in, getting that kill onto Assassin has really saved this point and, and ground out some more time. They're oh, so wow. close to getting the cap, but it's just not quite going over. SCCK fighting tooth the nail for every inch here. Mon will oh, get the cap. It. And, oh, uh, nearly slips. Oh, nearly slips out with his life, but. Yeah, you know how painful it is to throw bodies on that cart and not get over the line. Nubby goes down to Timmy, so um, that's a good bit of early suppression down for SDCK as Equestria Girls want to progress this cart round the corner. They really need Ajax on it. They want to make up as much ground as possible in lieu of um, Nubby. Uh, we do see both teams now on the Uber charge. A rotation through basement for Equestria Girls. Looks like they want to take this open flank site um, unbeknownst to SDCK, but they're going to get spotted pretty rapid quick here with their spy also going down. Mezzo spotted as well by Buko. He's getting away with nowhere near as much as you'd expect from Mezzo. That's really unfortunate. They've obviously thought about it, um, but yeah, a, a pretty slow. It looks like Equestria Girls just feeling the enemy team out, but losing three players is not a good way to start. It's not, yeah. When you're getting ready to a getting ready, ready for that push, losing a player, it's just frustrating because you just have to reset everything. But the spawns are faster, and they do get Nubby, and he's in the respawn queue for another five seconds here, so they can just maybe start pushing when Nubby's not even buffed. They go in, get the force. That sentry is in a high position, though, being wrangled. Alabama's gone down, and not really many players here getting ready to push. It looks like 
Uh, Nambus on the cart, trying to get some time, but that cart is just going to be blocked by the sentry. Clark has got it in a safe place. It's not going to get sapped. And uh, they pick up so many kills here. Mere less than a minute to go. It's going to be really hard for them. They're just going to have to do this dry. Yeah, because of the amount of time Equestria girls took to actually execute their push. Um, what could potentially have been, you know, two uber pushes that's just turned into one um, for the continuum of this game. So, uh, unfortunate for them. And we know how punishing the collapse can be from the defending side on this map. You know, you're just staring downhill at these players. It's really, really awful to get stuck because you know these players want to get the cart. You know they want space. And uh, if they got a little bit short, they get also uh, ultimately destroyed. Um, Alabama managing to pick up three as he peeks around that corner. Two really essential players from SCCK. They're dropping like flies. They are just four players up. This gun is being an absolute trooper. Uber is popped as well. Assassin is only 95%. SCCK really want to pick up a lot of frags here and try to disrupt this Equestria Girls push. We could be seeing the cap go over the line. There's five seconds left, but enough players from SCCK on the cap to block. The Uber charge as well is definitely not healthy Equestria Girls. And that was, uh, that was pretty nails. That was but clinching like finale there coming out of Equestria Girls. They could have won it. That was so close. The fact that the Uber was used so much later by SCZK in the previous exchange meant they had that 15-20% advantage. So while you know, they lost five players there, they, the entire combo lost like 1v1s. Aleski got taken down by Am Alabama, Nubby went down to Namba, and suddenly Equestria Girls find themselves four players to the good, able to flood in, get time on the cart, but DQZ had that Uber and the person who saves it his T-board and the fact that he was alive he's able to physically block the car just push people away and that Uber is then trying to get onto the spawn and catch out the rest of the players that were fighting like DQ's uh, sorry like Red Licks and t bordens like nope just get the hell away from me I'm gonna air blast you until I run out of ammo and he able to, he's able to save it he's able to save it that one play at the end uh, stops Equestria Girls from getting the cap and it is gonna be SCK getting the first round on Vigil all over. It could be the ultimate reserve reverse sweep as we go into this second round of vigil. They're attacking first, and like you said, if they learn from you know the couple of mistakes that they've made, then definitely it's going to put them in a better start. But of course, ACC are going to be learning too, and we're going to be like, you know what, that was close. Let's not underestimate these guys. Yeah, so Equestria Girls now hoping to put up a pretty decent time uh, on the offense. They're going to be the ones to set the benchmark that SDCK have to work to here. So. Um, I can imagine we're going to see a pretty similar arrangement to previous. They've got that really aggro uh, teleporter entrance to SCCK now ready to um, assist Red Lakes with that nice early frag. But Akashi Girls should be anticipating it this time around. So um, again, a, a pretty vanilla setup to what we've seen SDCK do. Exactly the same as last round. And uh, they're just going to look to uh, sort of get a few little micro advantages you know this point is all about just trying to slow them down just a little bit you know you might get five seconds you might get 10 seconds but as we saw in that first round five or ten seconds uh, could be the difference yeah, absolutely i mean that was literally won by a few seconds we've seen titles won by the case of lesser than a second um it's definitely not over here equestria girls you know there's been a bit of a back and forth in the chat there's definitely some feelings running high here and Buko is going to get the first kill onto Redlick, so that's going to really open things up. Uh, Nubby is hiding around the corner, um, and he's, he's going to back away, playing it safe. Yeah, sensibly so. They knew they didn't have the early frag coming out of Redlick, so um, just playing it a little bit safe. We know it's all about the second at the start of this map, but Nubby goes in and manages to get the force onto Assassin. Plus, Nambert going super, super deep, but is met only by T4, and that is the last player on the server I want to be faced with as an Uber demo man. So, uh, SCCK back out quite sensibly, losing two members of their combo. Looks like they want to pop the banner, try and do a little something, and manage to frag seven players on the cart. Jackie Lake's on a six kill streak. Oh my god. You know, you know, like, when you watch... I mean, I don't watch American football, NFL, but you know you know, they have those boards and it's, like, super complicated. Like, this person goes here and this person goes here. And it, that's... Like, it's just, I just witnessed that from SCCK here. Jackie Lakes bombs in, gets the force onto Assassin, jumps away again, prepares his with his conch in a safe place, and then Equestria are like, you know what? SCCK are backing up. Let's push. They run into Aleski, who manages to gun down a bunch of damage onto people. Takes down one, two, and then the conch comes in from Jackie. He picks up a ton of kills and they're able to like find themselves in an even better position despite having not used their review. It's absolutely like pinpoint perfection from so many players there. Really well played and you know the fight's on to second now but you know SCK still have that 100% Uber in the bank. 
Yeah, we, we're going to have to ask Core to draw some arrows on the screen. I've got no idea. <laughs> but uh, Equestria Girls now um, trying to burst their way out of this tunnel. Alabama seemingly leading the helm. They pop a really early uber charge. The Sentry Gun's so, so healthy. No pressure's coming from any other angles. They managed to pick up Red Legs. The gun does go down as well, but the post uber positioning is not going to be great. Five players down now. Four Equestria Girls and SDCK. Uh, got a decent chunk of time to, to get themselves comfortable on this hold again. DQZ, a, a very slight uber advantage, but an advantage nonetheless on this defense. You know how like each kill is pretty much equal in terms of the scoreboard? A backstab is two points, you know, things like that. But a bottle kill and then a taunt afterwards is still only worth one point on the scoreboard. But the mental damage um, it does to you, is it, it's, it's hard it's to minutes. come back from. You know, it's minutes, yeah. isn't it, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> seen a fair few taunts out of Nubby this game. He's obviously trying to get in someone's head. Either that, or he does not care whatsoever. But uh, Mong tries to get in there, but um, due to the Wrangler and some reflex, does it get pretty off pretty sharpish. Red Lake's down to Timmy as well. So um, SDCK just trying to cement themselves here. They're two players down. They are, are progressively getting the spawners. Um, but Mezzo quite importantly manages to get Namba. So um, sort of invalidates the attempt of a bit of a force here because um, Mong just goes in alone. It's going to be a trade instead. They are two players down Equestria Girl, so it's going to be a bit of a sticky situation. They're four down now. Nubby and May chasing really, really deep here as well. Alabama painfully low too. And uh, Deep Border gets a reflect kill onto Mong as well. They're just running amok. They've gone so painfully deep and with no risk to DQZ whatsoever. Oh, Mezzo channeling the, uh, the ambassador there, hitting a headshot and cleaning up Ajax, a pretty nice player. I haven't seen, I haven't seen the ambassador much anymore. Back in my day, Mir, all you could Where, hear was where's ambassador. Where's Toast, man? Where's Toast? <laughs> um, you know, not hitting ambi shots anymore, but uh, you know, it's nice to see people bringing it out. It's nice to see, and he also uses the knife there, Mezzo getting a backstab as well, and then one HP escaping with the dead ringer, almost getting out alive, um, but uh, yeah, SCK just in a position right now where they're so far forward, the pressure really is on Equestria Girls to try and find a way, okay, we need to get people into position, we need to regroup and actually make ourselves be a threat. Because right now, Jackie Legs, okay, he dies, but he was on a 9 kill streak. SCK are running right a little bit at the moment. Yeah, he has killed the equivalent of the entire team. However, in saying that, um, the Uber charge being popped off didn't quite work out in SCCK's favour. Instead of get, picking up four frags, they lose four players uh, with their aggro pause. Clark is going to have to move his gun into a pretty passive position here. And four players down, you think that is free season uh, for Equestria Girls to move forward. They're now 100% uber charge. They pop super early out of the tunnel again. I don't think they're going to be able to get the position they're actually hoping for out of this. It's, it's another potential disaster. It fades. No frags picked up whatsoever and no position gain. Four down. That was... Um, that was doomed to fail from the start, so uh, unfortunate there. May in the back lines as well, manages to kill Namba. Assassin plus completely isolated in tunnel, also does fall. And this point, rapidly slipping out of Equestria Girls' hands. They are not getting any leg ups whatsoever. At this moment in time, if you're like, you know, on, on the side of Equestria Girls, at least one or two people on the team is looking at the rounds timer right now and saying, We've got three minutes and we've got to capture second. Like, you know, we're, we're not even close to finishing the map. We, we need to finish second at this point. Um, and knowing that DQZ has that 100% Uber in the bank, they're going forward. Like, Nubby is just playing fast and loose with this corner, knowing that he has that Uber ready to pop into them if needs be. Equestria Girls need a big play. They need a drop. They need something. They need a fight to go their way. Redlix does go oh, down to Pico, no. but this Uber is just killing Assassin, getting so much damage onto everyone else. It's, it's not looking good for them right now. Yeah, it's painful. There was, you know, it was all going so well. That first round down to the wire. Ooh. And we know, you know, there are, as we said, there are stop gaps on this map. It's really, really sticky when, when uh, the defending team gets comfortable and is able to um, sort of pick apart your pushes. So um, do empathize with Equestria Girls, but it's not a time for empathy. It's a time for them to get this cap over the line. They're all getting their way out of this tunnel once more. It's failed them so many times before and they just get eaten alive once again. DQZ manages to pick up Timmy as well. Looks like a slightly coordinated assault, but again, no position gain whatsoever every single time that Equestria Girls peeks their head through this tunnel. That was, if they had done that like 10 seconds earlier, they would have gone through, captured the, got on the cart and probably captured the point, but they go there and they run into a, a virtual meat grinder. I, you know, 
T-Board and got a Reflect kill there. I want to know how much damage that rocket did to everybody else because, you know, it did so much damage to that group of players. They all get cleaned up. At the moment, they're in dire straits right now. 1 minute 20 seconds left on the clock. They're 4 down, but so is SCCK. They have to get the capture done. It is equal Ubers. They have an opportunity to reset, make a push happen here, and get you know back rolling on this map. Yeah, they definitely need it. Clark has got some crits in hand. Equestria Girls trying to make their way up onto Hill, which is a little bit of a mix-up, which is what we want to see. The Nabba gets launched in the air, body shot, and uh, splash rocketed, so um, his uh, sort of push faltered a little bit there. It's just going to be Alabama up at the front um, to no avail. Unfortunately, the game, again, is slipping out of Equestria Girls' hands. It's Clark so deep in, trying to get a frag onto the Medic. That uh, doesn't quite get it, and oh, we got the Demo Knight! CJ, we got the Demo Knight! He got an axe kill, and he got a shield kill, man! He got the combo, one after the other, the axe kill, then the shield Oh, you know what, whoever earlier on in chat was saying, I'm leaving if there's no Demo Knight this game, there you go, you have to stay now, legally come back, you have to come stay. Back, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that means that his KD on Demo Knight is uh, 2, which is better than his KD on Demo Man, probably. So, I think uh, maybe, maybe they have a matter shift. <laughs> It's uh, it's definitely kind of, you know, SCK are uh, playing as... Oh my god, he gets a sun <laughs> No! brilliant! Oh the charge god. crit kill as well? This is crazy. Oh, he's trying to find Timmy. Buka comes out of the teleporter, and he's there waiting for him. May steals the frag. But that was a... Uh... Back, back, back to the match at hand. <laughs> I mean, we, the only thing we didn't see was the taunt kill with the axe. Uh, I wouldn't really pass him for the, for the second phase. To the point, though, yeah, we're, we're professional here, mate. We're going we're gonna to look at the game. And, um, yeah, I mean, SCCK holding them at second, meaning all they need to do right now to win, and I've just double-checked, they have 12 UGC titles. So a win here would be their 13th. Um, if they capture the first point within 1 minute and 20 seconds, then they win the round. If it takes longer than that, all they need to do is capture second and they win the round. And by virtue of that, they will be um, taking home the championship because, you know what, uh, it is currently 1-0. I'm, I'm just sorry, I'm a little bit distracted because this is a very, <laughs> very forward hold from Equestria Girls. And you know what, I, I applaud it. I appreciate the, uh, the ambition. They're trying something different. And you know what? You don't find new meta unless you unless you try things. And I mean, not... yeah, I, I did say I was a gambling man earlier. Um, my gamble is that Equestria Girls are going to hard hold SDCK on first. <laughs> you know, I'm going to say they hard hold them at the spawn door, man. <laughs> yeah. I don't think yes. they're going to be able to get yeah, out. This is too strong a hold. Absolutely. If nobody doesn't come up on demo night, it's curtains. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, pretty fast out the gate. The Uber instantly popped, quite understandably. It's going to be a little bit of a trade. Anzu and Red Licks, um go down either side. Of course, Equestria Girls, um, their spawns are going to have a long way to come to get there. Their sentry gun going down as well. They've bought a little bit of time, which I suppose is the point. Um, yeah. So they're getting the car on the road. Assassin plus Super Aggro Nubby in. Actually, he is on the demo night. Wait, oh, Assassin yeah, gets the kill onto Navi though. He's like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not letting you get I'm me not, again. Yeah. I'm gonna take that letting, takes down I'm the sentry gun as well. Anything. Measure. But yeah, can't moving forward. 40 seconds if they get it over this first point. As CJ said, um, it is going to be the end of this series with SDC being champions in um, quite hilarious style, I would say. Jackie comes in with a pretty high bomb, gets air shot by Mong, but it's all for show at this point. The car getting painfully close. Equestria Girls backing out a little bit too hard. Mong putting in a real shift here, getting a lot of damage, but uh, no frags converted. Namba's going to try and muck his way in, but five players on the cap, 15 seconds. Um, might be a little bit of a write-off. Timmy gets a backstab. He's so weak. Nubby gets the axe kill, and uh, that is our grand finals. That is the grand final <laughs> of the tale of the axe. Um, yeah, SCCK champions for the 13th time. Unlucky for some, but um, they'll be taking it crisply, cleanly. No dropped rounds. 301 product, 201 vigil. We won't be seeing uh, upwards tonight. It will just be SCCK champions once again. Yeah, I'm sure they'll be riding that high for years. But um, yeah, I mean, one thing I found in common between the two maps is I definitely had fun. I definitely enjoyed oh, watching yeah. it. I'm glad it wasn't a waste of time. But um I guess we should, uh, speaking of waste of time, should we have a little look at the logs? But they are combined, actually, <laughs> so it's not just map two. Someone's um, gone into the effort, mate, of combining the logs of, I of should, Vigil. I should the, respect it, you're right. The I least should. we can do is look, look over them. And yes. you know what? Top damage? It's not Nubby.
Nobby is actually uh, he's down in fifth. Maybe switching to the axe affects your DPM. Well, he Gets... it says he only has three percent accuracy with the axe. Actually, if you uh, hover over the the demo oh, man wow. symbol, so maybe he needs to go onto your walkway. Twelve percent accuracy with the bottle. Maybe the bottle is the is the way to go. <laughs> Four times um, more accurate. <laughs> Jackie Licks though sharing top fragger with Nubby. Aleski just behind with thirty one compared to uh, the duo's thirty two. But four hundred and ninety DPM coming from Jackie Licks. Some great plays from him. Thirty two kills, mere thirty four assists. This man, like I, I think, if you actually meet him in real life, he has a conch surgically attached to him somewhere. He's just so good with it. He was born with it and just knows how to use it and help his team. Um, so only the one air shot though. We've got to be. We've got to. Oh. Yeah, it's not. It's not good enough. He's got. Team Borden got three. So <laughs> obviously not, not denying enough, enough bombers. <laughs> but I mean, Red Licks, uh They're getting uh, out sniped a little bit by um, Buko. I mean, I'm not sure what the sniper vase sniper was, but um, I think in a situation like that where your team is absolutely dominating, Red Licks just didn't really have much to do when everyone was uh, was so far forward. Uh, and, the, and the medic kills there. I mean, DQZ with five deaths, Assassin with 13. Probably to be expected from, from what we saw in the game. But yeah, as as we touch on, you know, it's it's uh, obviously SDCK are going to do SDCK things in Prem. Equestria girls, um, all eight of them, minus Buko, obviously, because of, he's not playing with them in ETF 12. Um, can take this as a bit of a learning experience, you know? Second in Div 1. They're looking to take this experience. They're looking to elevate themselves. They're obviously very keen. I can imagine they're going to watch some of these games back. Maybe not the second half of second map. Um, maybe they will try and adopt some of Nubby's strats. But um, definitely a, a good learning experience nonetheless. And uh, SCCK perhaps uh, not to uh, underestimate people in it so much in future. But uh, a pretty entertaining game nonetheless. It was entertaining, like you said. I had fun. It was, it was a, it was a nice cast. It was nice to cover the game, and there we go. I mean, SCK champions again. Maybe a lot of people expect it at this point, uh, but that's their thirteenth UGC title. And like you said, Equestria Girls experience managing to get to the final um, of you know Plat is is no mean feat, and they'll definitely take that experience back into ETF twelve, which is continuing. We'll, we will have more ETF twelve games coming. I think we've had two, maybe three weeks of ETF twelve so far. I think we're on week three now, so you know, plenty more games to go. And this pretty tight. We got some good teams in Prem this season fighting for the top spot, and you know, we'll have to see which way it goes as we as we continue our our coverage of season twenty six of ETF twelve. But yes, I think uh, that might be it, uh, unless there's anything from you, CJ. Um, I mean, I can do a little bit of a little bit of the old uh, pushing out of the. You know, if you're watching on Twitch right now, you can do a little bit of supporting by dropping a sub. That, of course, goes to help support Chris Cast. You can do it with Twitch Prime as well. If you want to watch the VODs, then you can sub and watch the VODs on Twitch. Or you can watch them as we post them up later on YouTube. We also have various social media you can follow us on. We have a Discord, Twitter, where you can keep up to date with news from Chris Cast with all the coverage of Highlander, Sixes, and other TF2-related stuff. We also have a Patreon and all the money from the Patreon, merchandise and subs from Twitch do go towards supporting the production and the casting staff over at ChrisCast. I did mention merch. You can go to merch.chriscast.com to buy a variety of mugs, stickers, hoodies, uh, other things as well, all TF2 and ChrisCast related. And again, all of that money goes towards supporting the production team. But that's it from me, Mir. Yeah, and it's it for me as well. Thanks again to Core, one of the unsung heroes of production, and thanks to you, the viewers, for watching. Have a good night. Hi, old beaver. Away!